the sky, we exceeded this expectation in three key areas, in three areas and the subchapters of the brief overview I would like to give you today. The first one is the design. Both from an interior and exterior perspective, delivering the refinement, proper and much more expensive, higher class vehicle. The second, as an ultimate embodiment of Nissan value, Nissan Qashqai is going to deliver huge innovation and excitement, advanced yet intuitive technology, packaged in a very clever way. Thirdly, the dynamic performance coupled with impressive breakthrough fuel economy. But let's start from the design. Let's start from the, the dimensions. The dimensions compared to the current generation. The new Qashqai is 47 mm longer, 26 cm larger, and 15 mm lower. So longer, lower, wider, few millimeters. So the question is, uh, yes, but few millimeters for a car of 4 meters 37 is something perceivable. Definitely yes. And this was uh, part of the briefing we gave our London designers uh, three years ago. We wanted a car that was much more innovative, distinctive, but also prestigious, not only compared to the current generation car, but also compared to the direct competitor we identified. The first point is exactly the vision. The start from the grill, continue on the hood, very high hood, that gives a very energetic, muscular stance to overall the car. And that, on top of it, not only valorize Nissan logo, but it will be a major uh, family feeling between all the next generation of crossover we will launch in next month and year. Another element contributes to give this energetic, muscular stance are the fender, both front and rear. Meanwhile, on the lateral view, much clean, uh, net, dynamic line contributes to light up and to give a dynamic stance to the old cabin. But it's not only the steer, even in the interior, we are consistently delivering this refinement, not only in the design, but also in the execution of it. A material uh, like uh, the soft top dashboard, also the lower soft dashboard we have, the delicate uh, uh, can of black on the central console, the knee pad illuminated, unique in this segment. All these elements contribute to give this uh, feeling of much more expensive car. But the refinement was not the only target we had in terms of interior. Also the versatility. The versatility that our customer asked us to improve. A good example, so let's start once again from the dimension. So we said the car is 15 millimeter lower. But in spite of this, our engineer changing the art point of the platform have been able to deliver 10 mm more on both front row and rear row and 15 mm more in the knee room. So much bigger car. The two uh, 27 mm wider stands you will find also in the central console, much larger. And on top of it, having used the electronic packing brake, we have been free, able to free up lots of spaces that also in this case constitute a very good storage opportunity for the driver and the front passenger. To give you one data, below the armors you would see there are 6.1 liter space, is huge. But in Nissan we are also convinced that we, we should innovate. Innovation is not only electronics, it's not only gizmo in some way, innovate also means rethinking in a conventional way classical elements of the car, like the luggage. Oops, throw. So in the luggage, you will find two uh, luggage boards that allow not only to store the luggage cover within the vehicle, but as well allows when the rear row is completely full down to get a complete flat surface for the cargo area. These two luggage boards can be configured in 16 different ways. They're also reversible, being wrapped on one side by plastic material, very easy to wash in case you should uh, charge, uh, you should load some uh, dirty elements in your cargo area. So we spoke about innovation. Let's continue about it. And let's continue with the second chapter. The first uh, point uh, regarding the HMI, so the human-machine interface you will find in the car. The first one is the five-inch color display. You'll find the central instrument panel. It's very useful. It gives you three kinds of uh, information. The first one, classical trip info speed, distance, uh, uh, consumption. The second one, information regarding the vehicle, like pressure of the tires, 
like chassis control, we'll speak later on about it, but also navigation to a turn or audio information. A third class of uh, information that delivers is the kind of configuration you can have of the vehicle, namely illumination, interior illumination, sensitivity of the wipers or the light, or even the sensitivity and stiffness of the steel wheel. Lighter for urban driving, but being stiffer, a progressive for sport. But also, very important, and that's my perspective, is the 7 inch display you find in the central console that allows to access the new Nissan Connect generation. The new Nissan Connect generation will feature a series of applications in the field of entertainment, social networking, mm -hmm. travel, and music that will be fully integrated in the car and released during the and after the start of sales of the car. Important element in terms of innovation is the Nissan City Shield. Already announced in uh, the launch of Note, here integrated in enhanced with Nissan content, allows to feature important element to our customer. First of all, traffic side recognition. Secondly, driver system support. Third, high beam assist to guarantee the maximum illumination in all circumstances. Blind spot detection, lane departure warning, front collision avoidance. It's very important you retain that all these systems have been taught, designed, and introduced in this car with one clear target not to be an advantage of some sort of competitor, but to deliver our customer impressive value in terms of safety and comfort. And you will see it really today, test drive, I'm pretty sure you will agree with me on this point. They are not intrusive, extremely useful when needed. Another important point of our innovation is our moving object detection during parking maneuver. And also, the around view monitor already present in current vehicles now integrated with the latest generation of intelligent parking assist, able to park the car both in, in parallel parking and bay parking in only 80 centimeters more the overall length of the vehicle. Third chapter we said is dynamic performance associated with the impressive fuel economy. So the target we gave our engineer was very easy, straightforward. We wanted to always assure a capable acceleration with proper intention, as well as secure feel, even at high speed, a DC node uh, central screen, a uh, small dimensional vehicle with some blue lines around. So please, I don't invite you to bring it to the limit of the car, but in case of it, you will recognize the intervention. The very good point is not intrusive, so you almost not notice entering, but you will see that you are able always to keep the full control in the vehicle you are driving. <coughs> but we said efficiency was important, was fundamental in our concept. And the first element is definitely the weight loss. At the same level of spec, the car have lost 90 kilos versus the current vehicle. That reduced actually only 40 if we put inside all the technology we spoke before and uh, all the requirements for new uh, regulation in terms of safety. This is still an impressive result. If you think uh, back to one of my previous slides, the car grew in all dimensions and uh, with an eye for new, they were targeting the maximum in terms of rating for safety in Europe. Second element for reaching the efficiency is definitely aerodynamics. Our engineers and designers worked in every single detail of the design of the car, including the spoiler or complete flat floor on the under body of the car. Even with the grid shutters available on the manual transmission diesel that allow to regulate the aerodynamic and deliver an impressive drive coefficient 032, better than the 360 Ferrari you see on the right side. But one important element, fundamental element for the efficiency of the power train. Four engine, two uh, engine and uh, diesel, a two engine on the petrol side that allow us to go from the current 190, 187 gram to the 99, 132 gram of the this generation. This engine are the 1.2 petrol, DIGT, and 1.6, as well as the 1.5, 1.6 diesel DCI. All downsize all uh, turbo in injected, direct injection, all turbo, always stop and start, stop and start, standard. Let's have a close look to the three vehicles you will test today. 
you test the monotransmission, 80% of the torque available already below 1,500 RPM means that it's very progressive, very linear in the delivery of the power. There's no lag into the pedal with impressing 99 gram of CO2. This allows me to say very openly to you, is not the result of a few tricks of homologation, the result of a massive investment from the company in terms of technology, in terms of injection, injector technology, oil pump, tube architecture, or recycling of exhaust gas. This delivers not only massive, impressive value in terms of fuel economy, but also you will notice very good noise and vibration on all the delivery and on the range of performance. Second engine you will test today is the 1.2 manual transmission, petrol. 115 horsepower, 190 newton meter, and 90% of the torque, also in this case, available very low RPM. Also in this case, the technology allows not only to have a better torque and better performance versus the 1.6 naturalized paid substitutes, but also to deliver a much better uh, fuel efficiency. The third engine, our train you will test the 1.6 DCI, 130 horsepower, 320 newton meter, huge couple, that in this case is coupled with an X-tronic transmission. We're very proud, I don't know from you, of this transmission. It's the new automatic transmission, or engineer that created. And that if we boil down all the engineering studies made around it, is able to, how to say, uh, couple the best of two worlds. A low RPM, low speed, is the same advantage, quietness and smoothness, of a continuously variable transmission. Meanwhile, when you need more air acceleration, the transmission is able to simulate a step change, mimic a dual clutch transmission. You will see the result is definitely elimination of rubber band feeling, the classical noise, the density. Then we are always connected feeling between driver intention and feedback from the vehicle, improve the control feeling in all situations, and finally, maintain the smoothness. The result is to target the sportivity, the linearity, the dynamic handling that we gave as a briefing to our customer and our these engineers. They'll be available as of the lowest grade, and, but some of them already probably on the mid grade, and some on the technical grade. In any case, all this technology has been, it will be offered to the customer very reduced price. So we don't want to create something we offer only 1%, 2% of our customers. We definitely want them to get a full accessibility in terms of intuitiveness, but also in terms of cheapness, economy of the, of the elements. So we will definitely don't want to overcharge and we will try to spread as much as we can.